Hey, welcome everyone. Today, we're going to build a simple CRUD MERN application covering both the backend and the frontend. On the backend, we'll develop five API endpoints for data retrieval, specific record queries, record updates, and deletions. On the frontend, we'll focus on displaying data, adding new records, and updating existing ones. We won't cover CSS styling in this tutorial. I've also covered how to publish a MERN project on AWS Lightail and render in previous videos. Hey, welcome everybody. I've already created a new folder called MERN and inside this folder is where we're going to be creating our server and our client project. They're going to be two different projects, but we're going to store them in one folder so they're easily accessible from Visual Studio Code. We're going to create the server, so new folder server. And we can open this MERN folder inside Visual Studio Code. On Windows, there is a shortcut by doing left shift, right click, and open in terminal. Then we can do code period, and this will open Visual Studio Code. On the left side, we have the Explorer. And as you can see, we are in the MERN folder and we have the server folder that we just created. So we can either use the PowerShell from here or we can use the terminal from inside Visual Studio Code. For me, because I'm zoomed in, I need to press on the three dots, terminal, new terminal. As you can see, we're currently in the MERN folder, which is correct, but we need to navigate to the server folder so we can initialize a new project. In order to do this, we can do CD, server. And from here, we can initialize a new project by doing npm init dash y. And the dash y for like is just going to skip all of the questions and create the package.json file for us. Now let's clear this and let's install all of the packages that we need. So I'm going to do npm i for install and then we're going to do course.env express and mongoose. I will explain every single package as when we use it in the project. Let's clear this one more time and I'm going to install a development package called node1. So npm i for install and then this is going to be dash dash save dash dev node1. Node1 is going to help us restart the server every time we make a change in our project. It's just a nice way of developing in Node.js. Let's minimize this and the first thing that I would like to do is go to the server folder and create a .env file. Inside this .env file, later on in the tutorial, we're going to be storing the MongoDB connection string, which will contain our username and password. So we need to keep this safe. And in most cases, people will publish this project on GitHub and you don't want to expose your username and password. So in order to do this, so what we can do is create a new file called .gitignore. Inside this file, we can tell which files and folders to ignore. So I'm going to do .env. Save this and we are good to go. Now let's open the package.json file and have a look at it quickly. So from here, we have the name version and description. And if we look below, we have the script, which I'm going to look in a second, dependencies and development dependencies. Now, as of currently, these are the dependencies that we're going to be using today. And these are the current versions. In future, they're most likely going to change. So note that there might be breaking changes and you might have to Google the errors. Feel free to comment below if you have any problems. But another way is to install exactly the same versions as the one I have. You can literally copy this and then do npm install and it's going to install those versions for you as well. And the last thing that we're going to look into is the development dependency, which is node one. Now let's focus on the scripts super quickly. Scripts are where we can basically tell a server to start a project or we can tell node one to listen on local changes and restart the server. So from here, we need to add two more. The first one is going to be start and the start is going to be just index.js. This is going to be kind of like the brain of our project index.js, which we're going to create in a second. So when you publish your project online, you normally use the start script and it's going to start the file that you want. But when we develop locally, we can do another one. You can call it whatever you like, dev for development. And then from here, I want nodemon to listen for changes. So I'm going to do nodemon and then index.js, which is the same file. So essentially we're going to start a script called development and this script is going to run nodemon and it's going to listen for changes. That's pretty much it. Save this and close it. Now let's create our index.js file inside the server. So index.js and from here we can start including all of the libraries that we need. So the first package that we need is going to be .env. So require. And then this is going to be .env. And as I mentioned earlier, this is going to contain our MongoDB connection string. So let's do config 
and we're done. Now let's add the other packages that we need. const course equals require and we require course. Course is cross origin resource sharing, which is going to allow or react application to reach or server without this we won't be able to fetch any data because technically speaking they're two different websites and they won't be able to talk to each other now we need to do const express equals require and then we require express like so express is what we're going to be using to start our server it makes things so much easier and there is a lot of packages that you can use with express and that's pretty much the basic so let's create our server first of all const app and then express and we can start this function if you hover over express here you will see that this function creates an express application and then we can do const and put a port number for application and then this is going to be process dot env and then port now this is mainly used for when you upload your project on a server online and you want to use the default port number because they vary uh, different companies use different port numbers but when we're developing locally we want to set a default one which is going to be 8000 and that needs to be different to the react one just to mention now let's create a super basic route and see whether we can start the server so i'm going to do app.get and this is going to be a home route so if we don't put anything here this is going to be home but if you wish you can put about and so on so that's going to be it and then from here we can do request and the response this is going to be an arrow function and inside here we can do something like rest.json and then maybe hello mate and now we can start our server by doing app.listen and then we can listen on the port number here and then this is going to be an arrow function like so and inside here we can do console log and in single slanted quotes, this is very important because it allows us to add template literals. We can do server is running on port, and then we can bring the port number with the dollar sign curly bracket and then port like so from here. Let's see whether we can run our server. So I'm going to go on the terminal one more time. In fact, I'm going to use the shortcut, which is control and the hat key on my keyboard i believe and from here we can do npm run dev which is the development command that we added inside package.json as you can see nodemon has started the node index.js file and it's running on port 80,000. if i was to come here and make a change let's say we make a space and save it you will see that nodemon restarts the server straight away which is exactly what we want so i'm going to go back here and let's try to visit our server in the browser so if you open the browser and if you go to localhost of port 80,000, you should be able to see hello mate and that's the first step of creating our server all right let's minimize this our application is running which is amazing and we can also create another route for example here which can be kind of like our 404 route so app.get and if we put star this means that everything else it's going to maybe do just json 404 you can also do it as dot status send status or whatever so if i was to go on the browser refresh this is still work but if i go to slash about let's say you will see that we're getting not found which is awesome let's go back and let's go back to the project and now let's set up some of the middleware that we need so first of all we've required course but we haven't used it so somewhere around here we can set up all middleware and to allow course the very basic we can do is app.use and then we can just do course just like we're initializing the express application here we're doing the same with course and this is what's going to allow the cross origin resource sharing we're also going to pass json data in our body of application and in order to be able to do this we can use express and we can set up some middleware so app.use and then express dot euro encoded and then we need to put this setting inside here which is called extended to true to true like so and we want one more app.use and inside here we can do express dot json like so and save make sure that your application is running you can just refresh the browser or you can look into your command line here and if everything is good we can continue all right now is a good time to create our database and connect to it 
So let's go back to the browser, go to mongodb.com, click try free if you haven't got an account yet. From here, you can use the form to sign up or you can use sign up with Google. I've already got an account, so I'm going to click sign in. Okay, once you're in, your dashboard should look something similar to this. If you haven't created any projects yet, you might just have a big green button. And all you need to do is create a new project. For me, I can click here on the drop down menu and click new project. Let's call this one Mern underscore one because I've already got a Mern project and I'm going to click next. From here, we need to select a project owner, which is going to be me. And we need to build a database. Now we can choose of where we want to deploy our database. And I'm going to choose the M0 cluster here. Scroll down. I'm going to leave this as default to AWS, but you can choose whatever you wish. And then I'm going to change the region to be the closest to me. So in this case, maybe. So in this case, maybe I can use Island. And for the name, I'm going to leave it as default, but feel free to change this. And then click create. In this step, we need to create our username and password. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you should see that they've already created a username and password that I can use. So I'm going to copy the username, paste it inside the .env here, and I'm going to copy the password as well and paste it inside here. And now let's create the user. After this, I have my local environment selected. From here, you need to add your IP address so you can connect to the database from your computer and then finish and close. While the cluster is provisioning, this is going to take a couple of seconds. We can go to network access. And I just wanted to show you that if you wish to, you can delete your current IP from here and you can add another one and you can allow access from anywhere and confirm. Now this is going to allow me to connect to the database from anywhere. All right, let's go back to the database. While this is provisioning, we can click on connect and then select MongoDB for VS Code. From here, copy the connection string, so copy, and then go back to your .env file. And we need to create a name that we can use in our application. So in this case, I'm going to call this MongoDB underscore URI and don't make any spaces around here and then paste your connection string. Now, if we focus super quickly on the connection string, you will see that we have the username, which is already added. And then inside here, we have the password. So we need to replace this with the password that we created earlier. I'm going to paste in here. Let's remove ready. And then here at the back, select a database that we want to use. In this case, I'm going to call my database box and save. Let's close the .env file now and let's have a look at how we can connect to a database. So let's open the Explorer and inside here, we can create another file called ConnectDB. And then this is going to be a .js file. So from here, in order to connect to a database, we need to require mongoose. So const mongoose equals require and then we require mongoose and now we need to create our connection function so const we can call it connect db and this is going to be an asynchronous function like so and then inside here we can do the logic before we do anything though i want to export this function so we can use it inside the index.js file sometimes our files get a little bit longer and then we forget to do it so module dot exports equals and then the function name which is this one here close this and now we can do the functionality so since this is a an asynchronous function we can do try catch and then inside the try we can try to connect so the first thing i'm going to do is set a mongoose setting which is going to remove some of the warnings inside the command line that we don't want so mongoose now set and from here, we can do strict query. And this needs to be set to false. And now let's do our connection. So const con, I'm going to call it. And then this is going to be await mongoose dot connect. And then we need to connect to the string here that we've added. So potentially you could copy this and put it, but that's not really safe. You want to be using that .env file instead. And we can copy the name from here, MongoDB URI, and reuse the inside here by doing process.env and then the name. That's it. And that's going to be bring the string. And now we can do console.log 
and then inside here we can do database connect it and then we can use template one more time because i'm using the slanted quotes we can do com which is the constant here and then dot connection and then dot host that's it and now if you wish we can console log the error which comes from here from the catch statement and we can also terminate the process by doing process dot exit one and we're done okay this is our connection string created and now we can use this in our index.js file so i can go back and somewhere around here we need to bring this file first of all so i'm going to do const connect db and then this is going to be equals require and since this file is literally next to the index.js we can do dot slash and then connect db like so we don't need to specify .js or anything like that and now we can run this function so copy it i'll run it here by or middleware and that's it if we open the command line you should see that we have servers running on port 80,000 because i saved node mode refresh and now we have database connected and then the string now one thing that i wanted to show you is that if i was to make a mistake let's say let's open the .env file first of all which is a good one and if i was to change this let's say my username is wrong i'm going to put ruddy and save now look that node mon did not refresh this is because node mon will not refresh when you make changes in the env file so you would need to stop the process so control and x or no control and c to terminate the process and then y to press yes and now on node mon is not written and i can rerun it by doing up and then npm run dev and now you should see that application crashed and this is because we're getting mongo server error but authentication authentication failed and obviously this is because i've messed up my username so i'm going to remove this save and then i need to restart the server one more time and now we should be able to connect perfect let's minimize this uh close the .env close the connection db okay the next thing that we need to do is to create a model which is essentially going to be our first table and its fields if we go to the explorer here and the server let's create a new folder called models the model that we're going to be creating is going to be called nodes.js we need to require mongoose so const mongoose equals require and we require mongoose then we can use the schema from mongoose by doing const schema equals mongoose.schema and now we can create a new schema by doing const node schema this is the name and then new schema and then inside here is where we can add all table fields so i'm only going to be adding two fields for this project and the first one is going to be title the type this is going to be where you can put type of array number string whatever you need so this one is going to be string and then we can set it as required quiet true like so and now if you want to create another field we can do comma and then the name of the field so description in this case and for the description i'm just going to put the type of string and that's it the last thing that we need to do is to export this module which we can do by doing module dot exports equals mongoose dot model and then inside here we put the name of the model as string so note in this case and then the collection which is here note schema close this and we're done now we need to include this file in our main index.js so I'm going to close this and we are currently inside the index.js. So here at the top, we can do const node equals require. And we require the file which is located under models and then nodes. Now we should be able to use this nodes model in order to interact with the database. But before we do that, let's insert some dummy data into the database. And I've already prepared some which you can find inside the GitHub repo and then data.json. If you copy all of this, 
I've just created a couple of nodes here. And if your server was running, then if you go to the MongoDB website under collections, you'll be able to see that under collections, we have books and notes. So this is the database name, and then we have notes as the database table. And the reason that we have books instead of notes is because I'm actually reusing the setup of Node.js from a previous tutorial. And the reason for this is because if you go to the .env file here, I have set of books. We can change it to note or whatever you wish, save this, but we'll probably need to restart the server. So if I close this super quickly, yes, and then npm run dev. As long as this runs, if you refresh our collections, we should be able to see that we have note and inside the note we have notes. And now I can delete the books database table, but then books. So now inside our notes database, we can go into insert document, click on this view here, and then remove everything and paste the data that I've prepared or insert. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code, close this, minimize our terminal, and let's create our first route, which is essentially going to bring all notes. So what we can do is copy this one here, make some space so we can focus on it and paste in here. So this is going to be get all notes. So this is going to be a get route and you can and you can put the path as whatever you want. I'm going to put an API and then notes. From here, we can delete this, make some space and we can make this as an asynchronous function. We have request response inside here. We can do try catch and then inside the try, we can save the data into a const called data. So const data and then we can do equals await. And then we can grab the node model from here. So await node dot find is the first query. And by the way, when I start typing, you should be able to see that we have a lot of options in here, such as find, find by ID, find by ID and delete, remove, update, and so on. So we're going to be using find here. And this is essentially going to find every single record in our database. Um, inside here, all we need to do is put curly bracket if data with exclamation mark. So if we don't get the data, we can throw an error. So throw new error. And then inside here, we can type something. An error occurred while fetching a note. Note. Let's do that. If we don't get an error, we can do res dot status 201 and then JSON and then we can pass the data from here. If we get an error, then inside the catch here, we can do res dot status of 5000 and then dot JSON and then inside here, we can do error. I'm basically using this to do to get what the error is. And then we can put a message saying an error. In fact, we can just copy this. Like so and save. That's going to be pretty much it for first route. And now we can test it as long as your project is running and you don't have any errors in the console. So no errors for me. That's good. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be using this tool here called Tender Client. You can go to extensions, search for Tender Client, install it and it will come up in here. There are also a lot of alternatives such as Postman or Insomnia if you wish to have an outside Visual Studio code. But if I click on this, essentially this is going to allow me to do different requests. But first of all, I'm going to click on collections and create a new collection. So inside here, we can click on this and new collection. I'm going to give this a name of notes and press enter. Here is our collection and inside nodes, we can click on the three dots and do new requests. And this is going to be our get all notes. Here we go. And this is going to be a get request, which you can change from here. So I'm going to put as get, we need to put the URL in here. So HTTP and in fact, here it is, but instead of books, we put it as notes. HTTP column slash slash localhost of 8,000 slash API slash notes. And now if we press send, we should be able to get the data from the database. Here it is, which means that our first route is working. And now we can do the next one. So let's go back to the index.js and let's copy this super quickly. 
and paste it inside here. And the next one is going to be get node by ID. In order to get a node by ID, we can pass it the multiple ways of doing it, but we can pass the actual ID of the node. So for example, this node has this specific ID. They're all unique, but we can pass in the URL and then query the database for it. In order to do this, inside here, we can do slash and then ID. You can call this pretty much whatever you like. On the previous tutorial, I called this slug, but in this one, I'm going to use the ID. In this case, this is going to be again a get route, so we don't need to change anything else. We just change the ID in here and we can grab the parameter from here by doing const note ID, for example, equals, and then we can use rec, which is the request dot params and then the ID. So we're using the params ID. This needs to match this basically. If you change this to slug, this needs to change to slug. And then this is just a const that is holding the ID. So now I can use this note ID to find the data. So const data await notes, but instead of find, we can do find by ID. Find by ID. And inside here, we can just put the ID from here. And that's kind of like if I do right click and format super quickly, that's a little bit better. And now we can check for an error. And if we don't have an error, we can display the data. And the same as before, if we get an error in here, we just display an error occurred while fetching notes. Okay, save this. And now let's go back to our Thunder client here. I've got it open inside here. Let's have it like that. And now let's copy an ID, let's say from this one. I'm going to copy an ID. It needs to be a valid one that we have in the database. And now we can create a new request here. So new request. This is going to be get node by ID. Press enter. And then this is going to be a get route one more time. So we don't need to change this. The URL is going to be HTTP localhost 8000 API nodes. And then we need to paste the ID in here. So now if I press send, we should be able to get a single book, learn website development. As you can see, this works. If I go to another one and copy this one here, oops, let's copy this and paste in here. We should be able to get another one. And if I make an error, let's say one that doesn't exist, zero, 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 send, you'll be able to see that we're getting an error occurred while fetching notes. And our second route is done. So we can close this. Let's go back to the index.js file. And now let's do the next one, which is going to be creating a note. So for creating a note, I'm going to copy this one more time and paste it inside here. I'm going to paste it here. And then this is going to be create a note. This is going to be app.post. This is very important. Then we're going to have API nodes, remove the ID just because we want to post on this route here. And then instead of getting a parameter from the URL, we're going to actually send the data through a body. So this is going to be done from React. We're going to be sending it uh, through the body. And in order to get the JSON from the body, constructed by doing const, for example, and then we're going to be sending the title, so title, and then we're going to be sending a description as well. And this is going to be equals dot request dot body like so. And now we should be able to use the title and the description if we pass them, obviously, and insert them into the database. In order to do this, we need to modify our query here. So const data equals await note. Instead of find by ID, this is going to be create. And inside here, in curly bracket, we can pass the title. And then with a comma, we can pass the description. And then we do the normal checks, just like before. And instead of while fetching data, we can do while creating a note. Perfect. And then that needs to be changed as well, while a note. If I do right click, format document, that's going to make it a little bit better. And now let's test it out. So this is a post request. Let's go back to the Thunder client new request, uh, sorry, inside here, new request. And this is going to be create a note, create a note. And let's change this to post. Let's change the URL to localhost. 
and then I'm going to do notes. And then to test this out, we can go to body. And inside here, we can send title and the description as JSON. We can put it like this title. And then we can put new note, comma, and then we can do description. This is a new note. And close. So now we can post this data to a route, send it. And as you can see, we're getting status of 201 created. And we have title, new note. This is a new note with a unique ID, which MongoDB does automatically, which means that if we go back to our database and refresh, we should be able to see the last record here, new note that we just added, which is amazing. So create route also works. Let's close this. Let's go back to index.js. The next one that we need to do is update note. So I'm going to copy this, make a lot of space. And this is going to be update a note. So we're basically updating an existing node. And in order to be able to do that, we need to know which node we are going to be updating. And in order to do that, we can use it through the URL. So we can pass the node ID inside here, just like before. I'm going to put ID. And now we need to grab this ID by doing const node ID equals request.params.id. Perfect. Now we also need to pass the newly updated title and description of the node. So I'm going to leave this as it is. And inside here where we have the query const data await nodes, we can do find by ID, by ID and update like so. And now we need to paste the ID in here and then the data that we want to update. So we're finding by ID, which is here, we're grabbing from the URL, and then we're passing the data and we're grabbing it from the body and we're inserting the new data inside here. And that's pretty much it. So an error occurred while updating a node, and let's just change that. Save this, and now we need to grab a node ID first of all, so I'm gonna go to the turn the client. Let's go here. Let's grab this. Let's send it first of all. Let's grab the one that we just created. So I'm going to grab the ID of here. Let's create a new request. This one is going to be update a node. And then I'm going to change this to put. Oh, this is very important. I forgot to change it. So this needs to be changed to put instead of post. Okay, save this. Let's go back here. So change this to put localhost node, and we need to pass an ID which we want to update. So from body, we need to put the updated information and I'm going to copy, can I copy the information from here? Okay, I'm going to copy this from the create node. And I'm going to paste it inside here, body, JSON. So new node, I'm going to put updated. And then this is a new node. And it has been and it has been updated. Save this. And now if I do send, make sure that this is put, send it, and you will see that we're getting new node. This is a new node. And now to check whether this has been updated, we can go to get all nodes, all node by ID. And let's check the one at the bottom. And as you can see, we have a new node updated and this is a new node and it has been updated which means that our put route is also working and we have one more so i'm going to grab this so i'm going to go back to the index.js file grab this here paste it around here and this is going to be delete a node by id so delete a node by ID is going to be very similar. We're grabbing the ID from the URL, which is here. Then we don't really need anything else. We're not going to pass any body data and we just need to change the query here. So await nodes and then this is going to be delete one. I don't know if there is one by ID. Find by ID and delete. Okay, maybe we can do this one actually. So find by ID and delete and potentially we just need to pass the ID and this will delete the node. 
and I almost forgot one more time here. Instead of put, this needs to be delete. Save it. And now let's go to the Thunder client. Let's create a new request. By ID, delete not by ID. Let's change this to delete and then localhost and note. I do need to get an ID that we want to delete. So I'm going to go to get all nodes, send this and grab the last one here, which we added. So I'm going to grab this ID for the test and then I'm going to paste in here and send this. Okay. I think this is actually successful. So if I go to get a note, send this, we should be, uh, we shouldn't see this note anymore. So send it. And as you can see, this is gone. The last note was gone, which means that our delete route is also working. And we have one, two, three, four, five working routes that we can use in pretty much any application. So in the next step, we can create our React project and interact with the data. All right, time to create a React project. And in order to do this, let's go to vit.dev and click get started. Scroll down a little bit. And from here, you'll be able to see the instructions on how you can get started. So I'm going to be using NPM and copy this. And let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And from here, I'm going to open a new terminal. So essentially, we're going to have two terminals, one which is going to be running our backend on Node.js server. And then another one, which is going to be running our React project. So I'm going to right click here. And by the way, we are inside the MERN folder inside here. And then I'm creating a new project by doing npm create with at latest. Press enter. And this is going to ask us for our project name. I'm just going to call it client and press enter. From here, I'm going to choose React and then JavaScript. And as you can see, this gives us the instructions that we need to CD to our newly created client folder here. So CD client, install the dependencies and then run it. So let's do that. Let's CD. I hope that you can see like this. Okay. CD client, npm install, and then press enter. Now let's do npm run dev. And this should start a localhost under 5173 for me. And I can do control and click on it and this will open it in the browser and as you can see we have a brand new react project in here let's go back to the project make sure that both applications are still running here and i'm just going to minimize this like so and by the way i minimized it with control and the add time on my keyboard let's close this let's focus on the client now which is our react project let's start by creating an environment file dot env dot local you can also have it as .env, but this is just going to be working locally for testing purposes. And from here, I want to create a variable that we can use for the entire application, which will be also easy to update if we wish to publish our project. So I'm going to do vit underscore that, by the way, you do need this and then your variable name. And I'm going to call it server underscore URL. And the server URL for us is going to be or server URL, which is HTTP slash slash localhost and then 80,000. Perfect. Now we can use this variable inside our application. Let's close this and let's have a look at what we need to do. So first of all, inside the source folder, we're going to have all main.jsx. Okay. We don't really need anything in here. If we go to index.js, I've slightly modified the original CSS from here and I've added a couple of styles. So I'm going to remove all of this and paste my styles. And I'll show you super quickly. It's basically a quick modification from the original one from Vit. And I've made the inputs a little bit better. And I've put like super basic styles for the H1, the header, the navigation, footer, logo, and the notes. They're like super simple, basic stuff. That's pretty much it. Have a look around and you'll see and let's close this so now that we have our styles inside here i'm not going to be using the app.css and i'm going to remove it after this we can click on app.jsx and from here we pretty much don't need anything so i'm going to remove everything except the open tags and the close tags in here and also i'm going to remove the app.css which we could have used but it doesn't really matter 
and then I'm going to remove pretty much everything from here as well. We don't need it. But we just need an empty application like so. Now, in order to create different pages and navigate between them, we're going to need the React Router DOM. So let's open the terminal, control and the add sign for me. Here where we have the client, for me, let's stop it. So control and C to stop it. And then let's do npm install. And then we do React Router DOM. Press enter and we're good to go. Now we need to rerun our project, npm, run dev, and we're good. Let's minimize this and let's include the React Router DOM here at the top inside oab.jsx. So import. And this is going to be browser router as router route and route. And I'll show you how this works in a sec. And then this is going to be equals from React Router DOM. Like so. From here, we can basically use the router, route, and route inside here, the return router. And inside the router is where we can paste all of our pages and we can put them inside route. So route, like so. And then the routes are going to be inside here, which are essentially our pages, and that's a route. So like route, like so. We obviously need to create a route before we finalize this. But also outside the router, we're always going to have a header. And we're also going to have a footer. Like so. So let's start by creating our first route. And we're going to do this by going to source and then create a new folder called route. Inside here, we're going to create a new folder called home. And then inside this folder, we can call our file home.jsx. From here, I'm going to be using an extension to save us a little bit of time. And this extension is called, if you go to extensions and search for ES7 React Redux React Native Snippets, then what we can do is here we can do RFCE and press enter. And this is going to create the file for us. So if we change this to big capital letter home, like so, and then change this obviously to reflect the function and or home should be working. If I go back to the app.jsx, we can insert home from here. So I'm going to do import home and we can do from and then the folder is going to be dot route slash home slash home. And now we can use this to insert it inside the route. And when we visit the path, so path is going to be equals slash. So slash is always the home route of our website. You can, for example, do about, and this is going to visit the about. But because we're doing the home page, first of all, let's do element. And we pass the element from here, which is equals home. But we need to open and close it like so. And in fact, we don't need to close the route like this. We can just do it like so. And that's it. So now if I save this, and if I go back to the browser, you'll be able to see that we're getting header, home, and footer. So our home is pretty much sandwiched between them. And now we can create more routes like this. Let's create one more. Just for the example, I'm going to go to routes, create a new folder, about, and then inside here, I'm going to do about.jsx. And we can do RFCE, press enter. This is going to be a capital letter about, like so. And I can just do about. We can paste some data inside here to make it look a little bit better. So I'm just going to paste an H1 and two paragraphs. We also need to insert this just like we inserted the home route. So I'm going to close it. Let's go back to app.jsx and duplicate this by doing all chip down. Let's call this about. Change this to about. And then this needs to be about as well. Now we can insert the about route inside here by doing all chip down and then let's do about. So when we visit the slash about page, we want to render the about. Save this. We go back to the browser. Hopefully we should be able to see home change to about now by doing slash about and you will see that we're getting about and then the header and the footer stays the same. Let's fix the header and the footer now super quickly. And in order to do them, 
we can create them as components. So inside the source folder, we can create another folder called components. And let's start with the header dot jsx and let's create the other one which is going to be the footer dot jsx for the header we can do something super simple rfce so we import in react which is great we also need to import a link a nav link so import link and nav link and these come from the react router dom so and now we can create links inside our header. For this, I'm going to create a header HTML5 element and wrap everything inside it. So this is going to be our basic header and we're going to have a link. And this is going to be our logo link, which is going to go to the home page. So I'm going to do slash and then class name of logo, which I've already created, super basic. And then inside here, we're going to insert a logo, which is actually going to be a logo that was included inside the public folder, so .svg. In order to include it, we can do import, and then logo, from, and then dot dot .assets, slash react dot .svg. Let's insert the logo inside here by doing img, and then this is going to be source, we put the logo inside here, and then you can put an old tag, react.js. And then let's put some text, react.js, and that's it. For the navigation, I'm going to do something basic, nav, and inside here, we're going to do nav link instead. And this nav link is going to lead to the home page, so home. And then I'm going to do one more, and then this is going to be for the about page. Let's keep it simple, and let's do right click, format document. Save this. And now we need to insert our header inside app.jsx. But doing pretty much the same as this. So import from, and then we do dot slash component slash header. And now we can insert the header inside here, like so. And that's it. If you go back, you'll be able to see that we're getting the header and the links should be working. Perfect. Let's do the footer super quickly because it's easy to do. Inside the footer, let's do RFCE. This is it. And then I'm going to change this to footer. And then inside here, add copy, copyright. And then with a little bit of JavaScript, we can bring the date. So new date. Get full here. Yep, that's looking good. Now let's insert the footer into app.jsx by doing the same thing as the header, import, footer, components, footer, and that's it. Let's insert it inside here, and that's it. Right click, format document, save, and if you go back, you'll be able to see that we're getting the footer on every single page that we have. Okay, so our home page is gonna act as our notes page. This is where we're gonna display our notes. Let's go back and open the folder, routes, home, and the home file. And we could create different components for it if you wish to, just as an example. So first of all, let's copy and paste a little bit of text inside here. You don't need to do that. Home, and here we go. Just so we have something on the page. And I am zoomed in quite a bit. From here, we can either create all the functionality inside the home page, or we can separate it in a different component. You can do a bit of both if you wish. So inside here, let's create a new component, which we can insert. So I'm going to import note from, and this is going to be dot dot slash dot dot slash component. And then I'm going to call it note. We do need to create it, but before we do that, I'm going to insert it inside here. So notes, and that's it. So essentially we can create a component node and insert them inside here just so we can keep our home page clean. So now let's create this component by going inside component and then we can maybe do it inside here and let's call it nodes.jsx. Let's do RFCE and then save. Hopefully if we go back we'll be able to see that we're getting a problem here. Nodes, nodes. So the uh, dot dot isn't working from here and I wonder why so let's do it one more time this is going to be dot dot slash and then slash component slash 
note saver let's go back okay seems to be working so note is now appearing here and we can modify the code from here from the actual component note here we go notes one two three perfect now we don't need to touch the home.jsx everything is going to be coming from note so let's close everything and let the fun begin so the first thing that we're going to do is insert use state and use effect so this is going to be inside here we can do comma use state and then use effect also i'm going to import link so we can link our node so import link and this is going to be from react route to dom and inside the function of node is where we're going to be building our logic the first thing that we need to do is to grab the get route which is get own nodes which is essentially this http localhost of 80,000 api nodes so we need to get grab this in order to fetch the data but if you remember if we go back to our client project we inserted this as a variable inside dot or inside or dot env dot local file and we can use this url so we don't have to repeat ourselves and we have one single file where we can change the url if we wish to upload it on a live server so let me show you how we can grab the url from here so i'm going to do const and i'm going to do base url and this is going to be equals in single quotes here dollar sign and then import dot meta dot env and then dot vit server url and then from here we can add the rest that we need for example api slash node if you want to grab all the nodes and that's it so this is pretty much how we can grab the url and if you wish to you can do console.log and check it out and you should be able to see the server url that appearing in the console i'm going to remove this and now we need to create a state where we can store the data and then display it so we can do const data and then set data all data is going to be stored inside data but we're going to be using set data to push the data inside data it sounds confusing because it is and then use state is going to be an empty array like so we're also going to handle the loading and we're also going to do very basic error handling so i'm going to do const and inside here we can do is loading and then set is loading and this is going to be equals use state and then this is going to be set to true we're going to do const one more time error set error equals use state and then this is going to be set to null and now we can use use effect from here to wrap or fetch and go and grab the data so let's do use effect like so and inside here we can do or fetching now you can do fetching with third party libraries but for this tutorial i'm going to be using fetch and inside here we can wrap everything inside a function so const fetch data you can name it whatever you like this needs to be an asynchronous function and then it's going to be an array function like so and inside here we can do try catch and let's focus on the try to start with i'm going to store everything in a response so const response equals and then this is going to be await fetch and then we need to paste the around here but we've already saved in the base url so i'm going to paste it inside here so this is going to be where the whole URL comes in, which we are fetching. And now we can check for the response. So if the response is not OK, so we're getting the response dot OK, we can throw an error. And let's say fail to fetch data, like so. And then if we do get the data, we can do const data equals await, and then we can do response we need to convert it to a JSON. Now, when we get the data, we can save the data inside this array here. And to do this, we can use the set data. So we can do set data and then data. And we can also do the set loading to false. Set is loading to, and now we can focus on the catch here and we can just do set error, which is here, the set error 
use date and I'm going to set it to error fetching data. Please try again later. And we need to set the loading. Set is loading to false. So basically, if we get an error, we just want to display the error and we want to set the loading to false because we don't want it to keep on spinning, if that makes sense. Okay, now that we have the use effect here, this is all great, but we need to initialize the fetch data somewhere and we can do it inside here, like so. But if we save this and we restart the project, this is going to continuously loop and it's going to waste a lot of API calls and probably break our application. So what we need to do is put an empty array in here. So I'm going to put comma and empty array, and this is only going to run once now. So save this. So to get the data before we do anything else, inside here, pre, just to display the data super quickly. And inside here, we can do JSON dot stringify. And then to make it look pretty, we can pass the data, first of all, and then no, and then two. And then if we wrap this, oh yeah, we've already wrapped in pre, that's all good. Save it. If we go back to the application, you should be able to see all of the data kind of like nicely presented. Obviously, we're going to make it look a lot better than this. So now that we get the data, we should be all good to go and we can do the fun stuff. I'm going to comment this for you so we can have it if you wish to, like so, and maybe we can just leave it here. That's fine. All right, and let's start with the loading. So we can check if the loading is false. And if it is, we want to display something. For example, I'm going to display a paragraph saying loading. Of course, you can put this as an image or whatever you like. And then what we can do is if we get an error, then we can set exactly the same thing. We can put a paragraph or whatever you wish, and we can put it as the error. And this is basically, if we have an error, this is going to set the error to this message here. So it's going to come from error, but we're setting it here, if that makes sense. Else, we're going to display our data inside here. Okay, and inside here are where going to be our nodes, and I'm going to wrap them inside a unordered list with the class name of nodes. That's it. And for each node, we're going to have a list, like so. And then each list is going to have the class name. And that's it. But we need to loop through the data and I'm going to do it inside the unordered list. So let's do it like this. Sorry about that. And let's do it inside the URL. So from here, we can do data.map and then we can map it as item. And then this is going to be an arrow function like so. Oops. Open and close. Yep. That's it. And inside here is where we're going to put the list. So in React, each list will have to have a unique key. We can use the ID coming from here. So if we do get to a route, we can use this ID here. So I'm going to do key equals and then item dot underscore ID like so. And now we have unique IDs for each list. And then from here, we can wrap everything inside a link. This link is going to go to a page, which we can create later on. And in single slanted quotes, we can do note and then the ID of the note. So in dollar sign curly brackets, we can do item dot ID. So we can go to that URL and then obviously make sure that you close the link. Make sure that you close the link like so. And inside the link, we're going to have an H3, which is going to display the title. So item dot title. And then we're going to have a paragraph, which is going to display the item dot description. Right, let's see how this looks. Added a little bit of CSS as you can see, but it's very basic. It's basically just a box with a background color and rounded boxes. And when we hover over each card, you will see that the link changes here on the left side. The ID changes and the idea is that when we click on one, the ID is put in here and we can use it to display the specific note. All right, super quickly, I just wanted to show you the loading. So if I was to refresh, you probably won't see it because the data loads so quickly. But if I do right click, inspect, if you go to the network tab from here, we can set the no throttling to 
slow 3G, for example. And now if I refresh the page, you should be able to see. Hopefully we should be able to see the loading. Almost there, I guess. Here we go, loading. And now the data will appear. And the same for the error. If I was to mess up the URL, for example, which does not exist. And now if I go back, it should refresh automatically, but let's put it, yep. If I put it back to no throttling, you will see that we're getting error fetching data. Please try again later. And of course you can make both of those things a little bit better. You can see it says this with red or something. And for the loading, you can make animation, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go slightly out of scope super quickly, but uh, if the text is super long in here, you might want to put ellipses. So dot, dot, dot. At the moment, I think I've put the perfect kind of like size of text, but if I copy Laura Mip, so I'm going to copy, in fact, let's just do a super long. Copy this, go to the database, refresh and change one of the nodes. So for example, the, this one here, I'm going to change and put a super long description and update it. Now, if you refresh your application here, you should be able to see that this has a super long text. So what I'm going to do for the description is super quickly inside the P here. Let's make some space and let's focus on it. Okay. From here, we can check the item description length by doing dot length. And let's check if it's longer than 50. And then if it is, we can display question mark and then we can display insert single slanted quotes. We can display dollar sign and then item dot description and then we can do substring zero and then 50. So we want to kind of like trim the text to 50 characters and then we can just put dot 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 to put the ellipses, which is great, but these need to be just outside here. If it's not bigger than 50, then we can just display the item dot description like so. Make sure that you close it. It looks a little bit odd, but hopefully if I do right click and format, yeah, it doesn't have that much. So now if I say this, you'll be able to see that we're getting dot 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 on this here because the text was bigger than 50 characters, but we are not getting on this one. We're not getting on this one. And we're not getting on this one, but we are getting on this one here, which is great. Now let's create a button around here just so we can click on it and create a new note. So we can do this just outside the loop. We can create another list inside here, or you can create it pretty much anyway, like and to do this, I'm going to create another list. And this list is going to have a class name of add note button. And then from here, I'm going to use link to this is going to be equals curly bracket. And then maybe we can put it as add note. We can create this page in a second. And then I'm just going to put close this, put a plus sign and save. If you go back, you'll be able to see that we're getting plus. And for some reason, the CSS doesn't seem to be acting right, but that's fine. And this is going to go to the add node page, which we're going to create next. So let's go back. Let's go to the route and then maybe, and maybe we can create it inside the home route here, or you can create a different folder. It's up to you. I'm going to call it add node.jsx. RFC E this, and we should be good to go. That does not look good. We can do add maybe note like so and replace this as well and save it. So this is going to be add note page. We also need to add this page into our app.jsx. So where we have about, we can duplicate this and we can do add note. And this is going to be home and then add note like so. And now we can use this inside here. We can do add note and then this is going to be add dash note. And something is happening here. So let's do dot route dot home and then add note. Okay. That seems to work. Save it. And now if I go back, you will see that we're getting add note and we're getting the text, which is great. Okay. That's what we need. So let's close this and let's focus on the add note page. To start with, I'm going to set everything that we need. So from here, we're going to need use state. And we're going to use use effect. We're also going to have a link. So import link and then from React Route to DOM. And now we can create a link here to go back. So link to 
and then this is going to go back to the home page and the class name for this is going to be back button so i'm going to put an icon super quickly back save him and here we go and essentially here we need to create a form with two input fields so we can add some data start by doing a form and this form is going to have a non-submit add node so this is basically a function that we need to create and we can create it pretty much anywhere inside here so this is going to be const add node and then we're going to do async event and then this is going to be our function for the add node so when we submit the form that's it and we'll do the logic in a second but before we do that let's do all fields so i'm going to do a div with a class name of single node press enter and inside here we can do div and inside this div we're going to do input the type of text let's put this on another line and then the value is going to be title, which we're going to put now. On change, we want to update the title, which we're going to create in a second. So event, and we want to pass what's inside the input box by doing set title to event dot target dot value. That's how we get the value from inside the box. And then for the placeholder, we can put title. And for the class name, we can put title. I think that would be fine. And we definitely need to create this. So inside here, we can do const title, set title equals use state. And this is going to be empty. And we can do this exactly the same for the description, but this needs to be const instead. So let's change it. So this is going to be description. And then set description like so and now we can do the description inside here in fact we should be able to let's do right click format and and outside this div i'm going to create a new one and this is where all description is going to go so we're going to do text area this text area is going to have the value of description now on change we're gonna set event set description this is how we update it and then we grab the data from the input event dot target dot value placeholder can be description rows we can set to four calls we can set to 50 and then class name can be set to description that's it close the text area here and we should be good to go okay it should look something similar to this if you use my classes we need to have a button to submit this form so after this div here just above the form we're going to create an input and this input is going to have the type of submit and and we'll come back to this a little bit later let's leave it as it is for now okay okay so now we need to do the submit logic super quickly and then we'll make it a little bit better so here i'm going to bring or url const base url equals and from here we're going to do in single quotes dollar sign import dot meta dot env dot vit server underscore url and then the url is going to be api slash note and now we can use this url inside all functions so when we press the input so when we submit we're going to be triggering this function here because on submit we have it inside here and we can do the logic the first thing that you want to do on forms is to prevent the default behavior of refreshing the page and we're going to do e dot prevent default and that's it job done and now we're going to do inside a try catch const response equals await fetch fetch base url comma and then in curly bracket we can change the method because we need to change it to post so method set to post then we can change the headers and the headers can be set to content type 
and then application slash json comma and then from here we can pass the body and this is going to be json stringified so json dot stringify and then inside here we pass the data and we can pass the title and the description oh and i've missed the columns in here that's why everything is red and that's it and just for now let's do console log and then the error like so let's refresh let's go back here and let's try to submit something so ready new note submit let's go back i know it looks bad but we got we have ready new note so this was inserted but the user experience is fairly terrible so we can fix this what we can do to make the user experience a little bit better it's not going to be amazing but we can do const and put on submitted submitted and then set submitted and we can put this as use state and this is going to be cool false so what I want to achieve is when we submit some data, I want to make some sort of a loader to tell you that the data was inserted and maybe we can even go back to the notes. For example, here, when we submit some data, what we can do is if the response is okay, then we want to set the submitted to true like so, and we can set a timeout. We can do set submitted to false and then 2000 which is basically two seconds you can make it fast if you wish and that's it or else we can just say console log and then fail to submit data like so so now we can use the submitted from here and if you go back to a form on the input here we can add a value and this value is going to be because submitted saving note dot 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 or we can put it as a as a little floppy disk and then save note like so and then we can do disabled which is another input property equals submitted which is going to be true or false let's see how this works and oops. and if you wish to you don't have to do this we can also wrap everything in a paragraph with the class name of text center and inside here we can get the submitted and we can do and and so if this is true then we can do div and inside this div we can have it as a class name of success message And then inside here we can put the message note has been added save let's add a new note and now look at the button first of all the default value is save note and now if i click on it it says saving note note has been added and that's it i mean you can do all sorts of things you can maybe redirect you can clear the inputs from here if you wish to by pretty much going inside here if the response is okay you can set the title to for example empty and this should clear the title now so i'm gonna do one two three save it and as you can see this cleared the title and so on and the notes have been added by the way which is great so now let's have a look at how we can click on a note so we can view it and update it so we've already got the link here which is note with the id and we can use this so let's save everything right click format and save and again i'm going to use the home page here to create this so i'm going to create a new route good note dot jsx let's do rfce and in fact we might be able to copy pretty much everything from add note and just modify it let's do that so i'm going to copy everything from here and paste it inside here and instead of add note maybe we can do update and make sure that you change this here as well we do need to include this into app.jsx so add note we're gonna do update note maybe 
or view node, whatever. And then this is going to be, I think I just called the node. And now we can insert it inside here. So app, node, and we need to pass the ID. So we can do it with slash ID like so to grab it from the URL. And now we can put the update node inside here. Save. Again, hopefully if I go back and if I click on this one here, we should be getting the same sort of page just like before. So now more or less our page is pretty much done, but let's go back to node here and let's just update a couple of things. So first of all, the form this time, instead of adding a node, we can change it to update node. It doesn't matter too much. And now we need to change the function here, of course, update node. Oh, just be careful that they don't match, I guess. And that's absolutely fine. So if we click on this node here, for example, everything is good. We're going to it and we're getting the ID. So essentially we want to be able to grab this ID. And when I press save, I want to be able to use this ID to go to or put route, which is to go to a put route here, which accepts the ID from the URL and then updates the node. So the first thing that we need to modify inside here is we need to grab the ID. And to grab the ID, we are passing it from app.jsx. We are calling it ID. You can call it whatever you like. And now we can grab it from here. So where we have link, we can put use params. And now we can use use params to get the ID from the URL. And we can do something like const ID. And then this is going to be equals use params like so. And now if you were to console log this, it will grab the ID from the URL. And we can attach it to the base URL here. We're doing slash dollar sign curly bracket and then put the id so now when i click on this we know which node we're saving because when i click save it goes to this specific url with that id and it saves where is it and it updates the node here this needs to be changed to put this time and nothing else changes we are just updating the title and the description but now the problem that we are having is that when we go to note, we don't have the original text from here. We don't have the title and the description. So we're going to have to do another fetch to grab that data. And then we can just press save and it will update it. That's pretty much the, the whole idea behind it. So somewhere around here, we can use the use effect. So use effect. Make sure that you have an empty array. And we can just fetch the data just like we did in our notes here. So in fact, we can copy it. So all of this can be copied, the use effect. And paste it inside here. So we are fetching the data, going to the URL with this specific ID. Then we're checking the response, which is good. But instead of set data, we can change this to set title. So set title and the title can be set to data dot title and then we can do the same to set description to data dot description like so and now because all inputs have the values of title and description if you go back you should be able to see that we're getting learn website development start with the basics learn html css we go back if i click another one they all come back and the update logic does not change whatsoever because I can just do rally one, two, three, save it. And it says saving note, note have been saved. And for some reason, the title disappeared. And this is because I showed you how to remove it from here. And we need to remove this because it's going to make it worse, actually. Sorry about that. So if I go back, yes, it will refresh because it comes from the database. And now I can do ready, updated, and then new node updated. Save this, everything is saved. And if I go back, you should be able to see Radi updated in here, which is great. Now let's jam a quick edit button around here. So where we have the back button, let's go to here. So I'm going to wrap this into a div called with the class name of breadcrumb nav. And this is going to go on the left side because I've put it as flex. And then I'm going to do a button. And this button is going to have an on click. 
and this button and this is going to be a function called remove note and then it's going to have the class name of delete that's it let's add an icon in here i'm going to add an mrg and then remove it's not going to look great let's have a look and uh, this is breaking because we did not create the function so i need to create the function somewhere on here so const remove node and then this is going to be equals async and then event this is going to be event dot prevent default so try catch and we can do const response equals await we're fetching fetch we're fetching the base url with the id and inside here we just need to put the method which we want which in this case is going to be delete and that's more or less it and then if we get a response dot okay there are a couple of things that you can do you can do another use state and make your form even nicer maybe with a nice message but i'm going to show you something else now I'm going to do navigate instead. So, and I'm going to navigate to the home page. So, this is another thing that you can do navigate, but I need to include it at the top. So, if we do that, we need to include it here. So, I'm going to do const navigate equals, and then we can use use navigate from the React router DOM. So, insert it inside here. And that should also work. Just like we've done the submitted one, you can do a note deleted uh, use state to make it nicer but that should do the job for now and if i click on the remove so let's click on this one let's click remove and uh, nothing seems to be happening and if i look at the console you see that we are not defining set error okay maybe i missed this but we need to put set error in here so i'm going to copy it from here and paste it inside here. Hopefully that solves the issue. Set this loading is not defined as well. Potentially you might want to remove them if you don't use them just like I have in here, but I've added them inside here now so they don't break, if that makes sense. And now if I go to this new node, click remove, nothing seems to be happening. I go back, the node is deleted, but the navigation doesn't seem to be but this doesn't seem to be working and this is because i missed the parentheses okay maybe that's the problem refresh add new node new node one two three save that again that needs to be removed from nodes where we reset from add node where we reset this remove it I don't like this and now if we go back we have the new node and if i click remove here we go everything seems to be working now new save has been added let's go and that's it that's going to be everything from this tutorial i hope that you liked it i hope that you learned something new consider subscribing to my channel like this video and comment below thank you very much for watching